Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lara or Lara Likes Mascara. I have been on a makeup no buy since the beginning of 2024, beginning of the year. So it's been about four and a half months now. And my plan originally was just to go on a makeup no buy for that amount of time. I just wanted to do January through April. And then I said, I would reevaluate. I would maybe finish the no buy there, but it has gotten to that point where I do need to make a decision about what I will do going forward. And so it was time to update you. And today's video will be all about what I am planning to do for the next few months and for the rest of the year. And also recapping how I feel like my makeup no buy went for the first third ish of the year. So let's get right into it. Also, I included this info in my last video, but my laptop recently went kaput. It just completely died while I was editing a video. I knew this was coming at some point because the laptop was almost nine years old. So I'm glad I got the time out of it that I did. But in the meantime, I'm researching other laptops to get and I will be ordering one probably today or tomorrow. So in the meantime, I have been using my partner's computer and a different editing software. So this video will be a little bit different than usual, but hopefully it'll be better in the long run. My videos will be better because I will be on a newer laptop with better editing capabilities. So. Thank you for bearing with me. If you do want to support me further, I don't have a Patreon or anything, but commenting and liking my videos helps so much. And also following me on all platforms. I have Instagram, TikTok, engagement really, really helps. So thank you so much for that. So first let's talk about how the past few months have gone and then let's move on to what's next in the future. So in terms of what I brought in over the last few months, I, at the end of 2023, I did a video talking about why I was continuing on my makeup no buy, how long it would last for, and what I planned to get over the next few months. And I said in that video that I hoped I would only bring a few new things into my collection because there were some things that I wanted. I knew for sure that I needed a new concealer and that is something that I have purchased. I don't think I've shown this in a video yet, but this is the NYX Bear With Me Concealer Serum. I thought that I would be buying a concealer from Sephora, but ultimately this was the one that I felt like I had heard the most hype about and aligned most with my preferences. So I actually went with a drugstore one. Now I probably didn't need to get it exactly when I did. Like I'm still scraping out the remnants of my current concealer. So I probably could have waited a few weeks or a month for this, but I was planning to buy it in the Sephora sale and so that's when I looked this up and it just so happened that this was on sale during the Sephora sale so I was like you know what like this the sale this is when I had planned to buy stuff so it's on sale let's just save myself five dollars seven dollars whatever it is I know I will get to it in a month or so so let's just buy it now and then from Sephora I actually only purchased a couple of skincare items which is not part of my makeup no buy. I'm not on a skincare no buy, but I didn't end up buying any makeup products from Sephora. There are still a few products that I want and that I had thought I would be purchasing in the Sephora sale, but I ended up opting not to buy them this time because I didn't need them in the way that I needed a concealer. The concealer I'm working on is the only concealer in my collection. So when I finished that, I did need to move on to something new. But some of the other things that I was interested in were a like brow freeze type product. You know, one of those like little pots like from e.l.f. or from Anastasia Beverly Hills where you like dip a spoolie in it and you like brush your brows up and freeze them into place. I don't technically need that because I do have brow gels which serve a similar purpose. Not identical because obviously they don't glue my brows down in the way that I really want, but I couldn't justify to myself buying those when I do have other brow gels. So that will wait for next time, potentially in the next Sephora sale or whenever that may be. But other than that, this is the only product that I purchased and added to my collection, but I did bring a bunch of other stuff into my collection because people decluttered stuff to me, which I just need to accept that that's something that happens frequently and I need to factor that into my understanding of my makeup no buy and like what my collection will look like as a whole and my numbers and just to sort of like keep that in mind because I was like I only want to bring three products in over the next few months and well I haven't counted I should go count and then come back but it was definitely more than three products that I brought into my collection. 
A lot of stuff was decluttered to me and I re-decluttered most of it. I would say about half or more than half, so I'm happy about that. But the other products, I just, I just wanted to keep them and I'm okay with that. What I thought would be interesting for today's video was to compare how many products I brought into my collection with how many products left my collection. This is something that I have been meaning to do for a long time, but I just uh, and was never organized enough to do it before. But now I'm trying to keep track of my makeup empties and makeup declutters. And so what I did was I actually went and counted all of the makeup products that I have finished so far in 2024 and all of the makeup that I have decluttered in 2024. And then I will be comparing that to all of the new things that came into my collection. So let's talk about all of my makeup empties and declutters first. Okay, so I wrote them all down. If you are really curious, I do makeup empties and decluttering videos every two months. I will link the most recent one here. And so you can go and watch those and see in real time as I'm decluttering stuff. But I ended up panning 10 makeup products so far this year in 2024. I have 10 makeup empties already. I think last year I had like between 20 and 25. So that's really good already. And I have decluttered seven makeup products. So we're already at 17 items having left my collection. And I don't yet know how many items I brought in. So let me go count that now and we will compare those numbers. Okay, so I've got all my new products here. So we've got the NYX concealer. Let's do mascara next. So my friend decluttered this mascara to me. This is Too Faced Better Than Sex. I've definitely shown these in a TikTok or short before, but I'm not sure if I've shown them on my channel. So I guess there's no better time than now. Haven't used this yet, haven't opened it. We've got a few products that came in at the very tail end of 2023. So I think I probably should count them as 2024 products. We have this CoverGirl Clean Fresh Yummy Gloss. I also have the e.l.f. Halo Glow Beauty Wand, the e.l.f. Halo Glow Liquid Filter, and then these two blush palettes. Each of them have three shades in them, but obviously they're each one product. Then we've got one bronzer this is a cream stick bronzer i've got an eyeshadow this is from freck it's a green eyeshadow which i didn't think i would like but i love this one foundation this is the dior air flash spray foundation i actually have a few of these because my mom decluttered a bunch of them but i they're sort of in limbo because i haven't decided if i should keep them or not or which of them i should keep because i don't love the formula and then we've got three lip products. We've got a lip gloss from Nude Sticks, the Charlotte Tilbury Mini in Pillow Talk, and then this Hourglass Lippy, which I have not yet opened. So let's count those all. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Okay, 13 new products so far since the end of 2023. That is a lot. That is more than I was hoping but that's still fewer products than how many products I brought into my collection. So I am happy with that. And that is sort of the trajectory that I wanna see. I wanna keep it with fewer things coming in than things going out. And I, I know there's like, there's more stuff that I'm gonna finish by the end of this year. So I'm hoping that I stay on that same trajectory. But the only way to do that is to stay on a makeup no buy. If I quit this makeup no buy, and even if I transition to a low buy or like, a regular relationship with makeup, my collection size is going to increase and that is not what I want. Even on a makeup no buy, I have 13 new things that joined my collection so far this year. All of these were either gifted or declared. So yeah, I've only purchased one product. All the rest of this stuff just has come into my collection and I can't think that that is like the anomaly or an exception because this is what happens like people declutter makeup to me and I accept it because I know that otherwise it's just gonna go in the garbage and so I think it makes more sense to stick on to a makeup no buy because otherwise my collection will just get bigger if I didn't have this cap on my purchasing it wouldn't be 13 new products coming into my collection it would be 20 or 25 and my main goal is to minimize and curate down the size of my collection and so not being on a makeup no buy is just not aligned with my goals. So I'm going to continue this makeup no buy. I think I'm gonna say for the next third of the year. And so that would be sort of until the end of the summer. 
And at that point, I'm gonna reevaluate once again and decide if I want to stick to the makeup no buy until the end of the year, or if I wanna be a little more lax and you know go on a low buy. Once again, I will be counting my products, my empties and declutters compared to the products that have come in, and I will see what that ratio is, and that will probably help me determine if it makes sense to stick to the makeup no buy or not. I will say that I still have some products in mind that I want that <laughs> remained from the past few months. So again, that brow freeze, maybe if I finish a brow product or two, then I will purchase a brow freeze because that is really something that I want. I think especially during the summer, that would be useful because I tend to go a bit lighter makeup and you know, the whole clean beauty aesthetic as BS as that is, like it makes more sense in the summer when you just don't want as much on your face and you want a more, like a lighter look. And brow gel can be useful for that. And I also, oh, I just love the look of nude lips and I really, I only have one nude lip liner right now. I would love to have another one. I don't know if I need two nude lip liners cause I'm not like a huge lip liner person, but I want one. So that is another thing that I kind of have in mind is like a maybe to purchase. We'll see if I finish any other lip liners within the next few months. Probably not because there's none that I'm almost finished, but you know, I have that in mind. And I will just mention two other products that I potentially have on my radar is maybe wanting to purchase one day and that is a stick foundation. I don't know how long you've been watching this channel, but I used to have this Merit stick foundation that I loved so much. I didn't think a stick foundation would be my jam before that, but it totally changed my mind and it was perfect for summer because it worked as both a foundation and a concealer. But it was super lightweight and I've really been thinking about buying a stick foundation for summer this year. At this point, I don't think I'm gonna do it partially because I have the e.l.f. Halo Glow, which kind of serves a similar purpose, like very light glowy coverage and sort of goes all over your face, but that is something that I want. I do. I did just get that new influx of foundations a few months ago, so that's part of what's holding me back. And then another thing, I've been talking about wanting a stick bronzer for a long time, and the e.l.f. sculpting, why do I never know the name? Halo Glow Beauty Wand Contour Stick, this is what I selected as that bronzer stick, and I really do love this but I think I also want a bronzer stick because this doesn't work as like a foundation product. Like I love when I see people underpainting and they use the bronzer as their foundation in these places. So then they don't use foundation in these regions. And that's what I want. I don't want to apply foundation all over the face. I wanna have concealer here and here. I wanna have bronzer here and here. I only wanna have foundation like where in the remaining regions, you know what I mean? So I'm not putting on like a million layers and this doesn't really work as foundation. So that is another thing that is on my radar. Again, it's not a need, but it is something that I will be wanting at some point in the future. Again, it's kind of contingent on how many products I finish. I do have essentially two stick bronzers right now, so I would want to finish at least one before I purchase another stick bronzer. It is my birthday in June, so maybe I will ask for some products as presents. Probably not. Okay, let's talk about other aspects of the Makeup No Buy, such as like psychologically how it was, because I've mostly talked about tangibly how the Makeup No Buy was for me, like which, which products I physically brought into my collection. But let's talk about how I dealt with not buying makeup for a few months. It was fine. <laughs> At this point, I am so used to being on a makeup no buy that it like it doesn't take nearly as much effort anymore for me to not buy makeup. And that is the goal. I feel like I've been like flexing my discipline muscles. Shauna talks a lot about this in her video about like how discipline is especially as it relates to spending money and if we're able to like harness our spending. So basically it used to be a lot harder for me to resist picking up that you know, mascara that was on sale at the drugstore. And for a while there, the way I would get around that was by simply not looking at the mascaras that were on sale at the drugstore. I would just avoid the entire makeup section because it was going to be very tempting. And even if I didn't 
purchase anything, it was going to be like, oh, so painful to not be able to purchase anything. But now we've progressed and I can look at the makeup and not buy it. So first stage was going to the makeup section and purchasing stuff. Second stage was avoiding the makeup section entirely. Third stage is going to the makeup section and not purchasing anything. I have fine tuned my skills and now, I mean, when I went in to Sephora for the Sephora sale, I picked out the two skincare products I wanted. One was the First Aid Beauty KP Bump Eraser for my arms. The other was just a moisturizer that I needed for when I run out of my current one. And I didn't buy any makeup and it was fine. <laughs> it was fine. So I'm much better at sticking to a makeup no buy now. I do want to say that part of this might be because I am bringing new stuff into my collection in other ways. So clothing, I am not currently, nor have I ever been on a makeup no buy. And I could see how being on both a makeup no buy and a clothing no buy would I know some people do entire months where they go on no buys. That means that like they don't purchase anything inessential over the period of that month. I think that that would be hard or even the idea of like not bringing anything new into your life for a period of a month or a few months. Because with clothing, I do bring a lot of clothing into my life and my wardrobe all the time. Similarly to makeup, a lot of this I do not buy. I attend a lot of clothing swaps. I have hosted some myself. I've had friends host them. And then there's some that are organized by like a local group here in Toronto. And I go to the, the ones that they host pretty much every month. And so every month I'm going to at least one clothing swap. And I mean, they're not always great. Like I'm not always finding amazing pieces, but at every swap I walk away with like at least a couple of things. And even if I don't keep them long term, like I'll probably try them out a couple of times just to see if I can like fit them in with my style or like, you know, for something for something new. It almost feels like renting clothing to me. Like obviously I'm not paying for it, but in the sense that like you have a clothing article for a few months and you enjoy playing around with it, even if it's a bit different than your style, but then it leaves your collection and you're fine with that because it wasn't your favorite piece, but it was nice to have something different to spice things up. So for example, I'll just show some recent items. I can't decide if I should keep this. This is from a buns trade actually. It's a sweater vest. I do really like sweater vests, but I don't really like them if I'm not wearing a shirt underneath. I feel like they look best with like a long sleeve black shirt or a long sleeve white shirt. So anyways, it's navy, it's cute, but I just, I don't love it. I might give it to my sister because she loves sweater vests but I'm probably gonna wear this a couple times and then make a decision. So it's that kind of thing, I'm like renting it. Same with this, I got this from Clothing Swap last week and this is like super, I wanna say like 70s. It's got shoulder pads. I would love it if it was long sleeve cause I think these types of like suit jackets are super classy. It's got this big button in the middle, polka dotted, but the short sleeve, I don't know. It makes it feel more dated. I can't quite figure out how to wear this. So again, I might wear this a couple times and then declutter it, or I might realize, oh, it really fits into my style. But because of this, because I bring so much clothes into my life all the time, it feels like I'm getting new stuff and it feels like excitement and variety and like new, new, new. And even though it's a different aspect from makeup, it's I'm still getting that like hit of serotonin. And so I don't feel like I need new makeup as much because I'm getting new clothing and I don't have to pay for it. And it's not bad for the environment because it's all secondhand. I did want to provide that qualifier. Highly recommend clothing swaps if you're like looking for new stuff and you're trying to stick to your makeup, no buy. Clothing swaps, new clothing, secondhand, all good. Another thing that's sort of related to makeup is that I've pretty much entirely stopped using buns. This used to be where I would get new makeup and also declutter old makeup, but I've just found it so time consuming. People have also left buns like there's not as many people on the app anymore. A lot of people are still using Carrot, Carrot with a K, but that's less of a trading platform and more of a purchasing platform. And I would just rather trade, like I'm 
more focused on trying to get stuff out of my life and declutter stuff than I am focused on bringing stuff in. And so if I could trade with someone and there's something that they have that I'm interested in, then it's like a win-win situation. I'm not as much interested in buying stuff from other people unless there's like a very particular thing that I'm looking for. But because of this, I'm not doing as much trading anymore. And so I used to bring more makeup in from the buns and I not really anymore because of that. It's also super time consuming to like, you know, reach out to individual people and then arrange a place to meet up and then like go to that place for every single individual item. And like, let's say I found five clothing items this week that I want to declutter. I have to do that for each of those five. Whereas at the clothing swaps, I will bring 10 to 15 items that I don't want anymore. And then I will bring home three to five items that I want. Now for the items that I have that I feel like are higher value, if they're maybe a nice brand or I think a friend might want it, then I will probably save it for a clothing swap that I or a friend hosts because you know, <laughs> the clothing there tends to be nicer on average than this random clothing swap. But if I don't have a particular loyalty to a piece of clothing, I'll just bring it to the swap and it's so much more efficient. And then I still come home with items that I love. So it's worthwhile. And there's still some like decent brands there. And like, I do acknowledge that when I get stuff decluttered to me or when I pick up stuff from clothing swaps or whatever, like it wouldn't, it's not necessarily stuff that would be my first choice. I wouldn't necessarily purchase these things, but it is still cool to try out products that I wouldn't necessarily have reached for otherwise because I end up surprising myself and sometimes loving these things that it never would have occurred to me to buy. It's like a sometimes if you're shopping with a friend and they pick something up for you at the store and you're like, okay, not for me. And then you try it on, you're like, oh wow, this is amazing. I like, I'm so glad I was shopping with you. Or you pick out something unconventional and you end up loving it. It's like that, but for every single item. So that's kind of cool. And it's also a way to get to try out non-cruelty free items, if that's something that you're interested in. It's kind of like a loophole. It's like, I'm fine with wearing leather that is secondhand. I'm fine with using non-cruelty free makeups that are secondhand, but I know this is a personal thing. So, you know, <laughs> that is entirely up to you. The last thing I wanted to talk about was just a very slight change in my project pan frequency. I think I am going to increase the frequency of my project pan updates, mostly because the last one, which was my previous video, it was over 35 minutes long. Like that, that is too long, but I just had so much to say because it felt like it had been such a long time since my last update. I had a ton of pans, I had a ton of declutters, I had a ton of overall progress on everything else. And so it was just, yeah, there was there was a lot to talk about and I actually have 11 products in this project pan and so probably the next update is going to be a lot as well. So I think I'm going to increase the frequency to every four to six weeks rather than every eight-ish weeks. It just, it feels like it will make more sense. Also, uh, there's someone on the balcony across from me, like literally right there and I feel like they are staring at me and it's made me very uncomfortable. But yeah, that is the plan. That is everything going on with my makeup life, makeup no buy and everything. Over the past few months, my plan for the next few months is to stick to the makeup no buy, but accept things if they de get decluttered to me. If there's one or two items I wanna bring in, that is fine. Like, I'm still gonna consider it a makeup no buy. I do have a couple of trips coming up, like small trips across Canada trips, but you know, you know, special occasions and also my birthday. So that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know how you are doing on your makeup no buy, if you are on one, when you think I should finish my makeup no buy. I actually did a poll. I will insert it here to see what you guys thought. And uh, surprisingly, you were in favor of me continuing this makeup no buy. So thank you very much. And I did want to say I've been very happy <laughs> overall that I was on a makeup no buy to begin with in 2024, because again, like I just would have been so overwhelmed by all of these products if I had other products coming in and I'm glad that I was able to accept these gifts and these declutters because I love them. Yeah, for the most part, I am very happy with them. And now finally, let's talk about a book that I have been reading lately. So this one is actually an audiobook. It is Doppelganger by Naomi Klein. So I have read Naomi Klein's work before. Actually, I think I've only read one of her books, On Fire, which was incredible. And this I just seen 
everywhere for a while. I'm a big fan of her as an individual and her writing, her values and worldview and her politics. And this is good. It's very long. It's like over 15 hours. So it's taken me a long time to work through, but it is basically her thinking about and talking through like the pandemic and also overall inequality across the world, a big focus on capitalism and why so many people went so far right in the midst of COVID and had all of these like wild conspiracies and like why so many people didn't want to wear masks or get the COVID vaccine and how it relates to politics and capitalism. So it's a real deep dive. It's very dense, but it's so good. It's very interesting. As always, she is so clear headed. She is able to distill down ideas so clearly and able to like draw connections in a way that uh, I am in awe of. So highly recommend that if you like writing like Naomi Klein. But that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you next week.